Well, thank you. Thanks for um, coming out tonight, and I'm so appreciative for the opportunity to um, show this work here. Um, I'm super appreciative to uh, Katie and Ashley, I've been mostly speaking with to gear up for this show, but also all the other staff that's working here that I'm gradually starting to meet. Um, yeah, so where to start? <laughs> um, so this is a um, a little fairy tale world that I've been working with for probably the last um, seven or eight years, and it's recently started to become um, feral biome. Um, and feral biome is kind of a concept where I am trying to re-engage imagination, um, trying to reinterpret fairy tale stories, and encourage other people to. Uh, tell those fairy tell stories with me, but as they apply to their own experience. Um, it's like I mostly work actually in paper and with watercolor and gouache. Those are probably my favorite mediums. But as I started going through this process, I was like, wow, I really would like to create this world, you know, for people to step into. And that's where some of these larger paintings started coming into play. Um, my background is in painting and drawing and um, so I, I love that I can go kind of in a more abstract place with these larger works and really um, work with texture and color in a new way. Um, one of my interests um, that I've been exploring and experimenting with a little bit in this show is to, a lot of my work I like it to be um, something you can interact with um, and to find new ways of making it accessible to people. So I encourage people to touch the paintings um, the only things you can't touch are like behind glass, so, <laughs> you know, um, that's why it's behind glass, but it's a little more fragile, but, um, I, you know, I'm trying to layer textures and find new ways for people to experience, um, what's actually there. Um, let's see, with some of that interactive component, um, and a lot of fairy tales, I, I do a lot of research in like fairy tales around the world, I do a lot of research on too, like animal species. And because, um, you know, they show up in fairy tales a lot, too, and they're all around us in this region. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about uh, northern Minnesota is how close we are to the trees and the forest and the water and the other, you know, critters, the other animals besides human animals, you know. And um, so there's always stuff kind of hiding, watching you in my forest. Um, but yeah, and fairy tales are also a lot of games. You're going on a journey, there's a lot of games, you have to figure out the puzzle. And so I started to kind of create these interactive elements that people could try to figure out their own puzzles. So um, I'm gonna kind of move around a little bit. Um, we have these story cards. These are archetypal cards. So just taking archetypes from different um, that are common in different fairy tales, you know, and stories and mythologies um, throughout the world. And it's a game where there are different categories based on the tree color on the back. And it's an entry point where you can, you know, pull out the cards and kind of create your own story for yourself. Um, and there's like little suggestions and stuff like that, but um, it really can be whatever you want it to be. And um, I've had people use these cards in many, many different ways. Um, and it's been kind of fun to see what they've come up with to create those stories. Um, I've also been working a lot with like um, paper dolls um, because this is something that I enjoyed a lot as a kid, um, playing with paper dolls. You don't see them as much anymore. Um, but just another way to tell a story, create a story. And you know, like a lot of this stuff is like kind of in the realm of the child, but it's also really for adults um, because I think as adults, you know, we're not really encouraged to use our imagination as much or to play as much, but it's still like a really vital part of our experiences. Um, so like these are like winter bird paper dolls, you know, like we have the, the um, crow, we have the chickadee, and we have the raven. I know there's some other winter birds too, but these are some that I see a lot. And they keep my spirits up over long winters. Um, and so I'm really appreciative for them. Um, over in the corner here, I've been, the, the theme of this is feral biome shadow work. Um, for me, 2023, maybe for many of you, was a year with a lot of shadows. <laughs> a lot of shadow work. Um, it was a year of like friends and family members being sick. You know, it was a year of just a lot of challenges in my own metaphorical fairy tale journey, right? Um, so with this, 
and then playing a lot with mm -hmm. storytelling with shadows. And so these are cards where you can kind of um, tell that story. This, um, this set is actually called, uh, this is a, a, a kind of a weird title, but it's Little Pumpkin's Journey for the Healing Potion. <laughs> because there are lots of different healing potions I think we need right now in the world. Um, and Little Pumpkin is this character. Um, let me see if I can find this one that's, uh, you can kind of see uh, the face of the character. Let's come down here. Um, here's one. You know, he's this character that's kind of like he or she is this character that's kind of like constantly like this <laughs> going through the big forest, you know. Um, but you know, we all feel that way sometimes. So um, that's another, you know, idea of like just some interactive play that I'm trying to encourage folks to do through this work. Um, some other themes are um, like, just like environmental concerns. Um, this year I've really gotten into um, sturgeon. I don't know, I'm fascinated with this fish. They're kind of, they're like right behind you too, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go stand right by y'all. Um, you know, so these are like two little uh, collages of sturgeon and, and one they're playing hide and seek and the other one they're playing sardines. And so, you know, it's like they're, they're kind of playful creatures. They're basically living fossils, like living dinosaurs. Um, some of them like to be touched by people, some of them don't. You know, that like kind of blows their mind is very weird and they, they look to be like over 100 years old many times. You know, it can be huge. Um, so it, to me, there's a lot of mystery in um, interacting with the critters, the animals, you know, here in our environment. Um, and I, I want to kind of bring attention to some of the animals that are a little bit more threatened, like the sturgeon, for instance, are one of those animals right now that are threatened um, as part of our ecosystems. Um, but I tend to do that kind of in a playful way, um, where it's kind of imagining this sort of inner world of the animal and like what they're experiencing. Um, a lot of my trees have eyes and mouths, um, kind of imagining the inner world of trees too. You know, I do a lot of hiking and I like to go out and visit some trees over and over again, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. We have the other collages that are around here that also are kind of like snapshots into like the inner worlds of animals. I mean, you know, it, this is one of those things like, I don't know when this started to become something I started thinking about a lot, but maybe it was like gardening or something and, you know, running across some, oh, you know, you know what it was actually? It was, um, it was like a caterpillar um, and, it, and there was like also a chipmunk in my, my yard when I was gardening and there would also, there would always be, you know, like a caterpillar like loved to eat, um, what was it that we were growing? It was uh, dill. It loved the dill. I think it was like a, it's a, it was like a, like a swallowtail or something, the caterpillar. And it would just like mow through this dill, you know? And it's like, you kind of realize that like these animals around you, these creatures around you, they have their whole universes that we're not even kind of aware of, we're walking by and just not aware of like what is happening in the universe. And then um, the same thing with this, this chipmunk used to um, taunt my dog all the time. And um, my dog would like start barking at the chipmunk and the chipmunk would wait. And then it start rah, 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 again, you know? And then like just to drive my dog crazy, to like tell us what <laughs> this chipmunk was doing, you know? Um, so it's just like, there's a lot of that sort of um, like tie in in a lot of my works where I'm thinking of like, you know, these animals are kind of animals like us. We have our stories where they're stories. Um, so, yeah, I, that's kind of the basis of what's some of the thinking in here. And I don't know if y'all have any questions. Um, a lot of these, there's, I have like, oh gosh, I have always a million different projects going at the same time, like pieces and parts of collages. I was, I, I you know, when I submitted work for, um, this call for these shows, I, it was like more completed pieces. And then when I was emailing um, with Katie and with Ashley, it was like, I, I think it was kind of a mystery for a while, like what I actually was creating because everything was like in pieces and parts, you know, and that's kind of how it like formulates and then it all comes together into like a finished collage. So 
I appreciate their patience and faith in me to actually like show up with stuff. <laughs> you know, like something like this was more easy to see the completion of that, but some of these other pieces, you know, were a little bit more uh, trust based. I think so. I appreciate that. But yeah, any questions or? So were you an outside girl when you were growing up? Yeah, I was a little bit. I mean, I think my appreciation of the outdoors has actually increased since I moved to this area. We moved to, um, well, we live in Duluth. We moved to Duluth, gosh, like 10 years ago. And we lived in the Twin Cities like seven years before that. And originally I'm from Mississippi, but I've lived all over the place. Um, and I don't know, being in, a, in places where it feels like there is civilization, you know, civilization, right up next to like kind of um, pretty pristine wilderness has been like a thing that's been kind of mind blowing for me in my artistic journey. Um, it's rare to experience that, you know, like I've been at the bus stop with my kids when they were little and had a black bear walked by like a block away, you know, that was like, you know, 500 pounds, you know, you don't find that everywhere in the country, you know, that's like kind of a unique thing for this region of the world. And so I, I find that that happens to a lot of artists up here. It's like the very land, the forest, the water, it just really gets into your DNA and what comes out in your artistic info. There's very like sort of a sort, sort of spiritual aspect to that, I would say. Um, and so I think it's only increases I've gotten older, you know. Um, but I mean, I've always loved animals. I've always loved trees, you know. So a little bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any murals besides this? Like, have you done any permanent installations? Or yeah, walls? permanent installations. Um, I've done, I've done maybe one down in the Twin Cities. That was like many years ago, though, and it was pretty different than this. Um, I did a different version of this piece at Joseph Neese Gallery in spring of 2023 which is in Duluth, and um, that was like a small room that, you know, maybe like this size, and you walked into it and the paintings were all around you, um, which is kind of an interesting experience because it was very like overwhelming because, you know, they're taller than you, but kind of in a fun way. <laughs> um, in that room, you know, like for this, this is like the nighttime scene, that was a daytime scene. Um, and there's some things in my painting that when I do a, like a big painting like this that I like to play a lot with the contrast of like texture to really flat planes because your eye goes in and out, in and out, in and out. And then it kind of creates like, it, you know, a dissonance a little bit. And so that makes you feel kind of, it feels otherworldly. And that was really true in that room where you're totally surrounded um, because it didn't feel, it was forest, but it wasn't really forest, you know. And so the whole idea was you're entering into this fairy tale realm, you know. Um, yeah. Did, did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> With a, I, I'm not an artist, but even to an ignorant eye like mine, there's a lot going on there. Mm -hmm. With a, something of that scale, do you know what it's all going to be like before you start it? Like, is it mapped out in your mind in miniature, or mm -hmm. do you sort of start at one end and who knows what will be going on by the time I get over there? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, yeah, my, and I will say my style is pretty maximalist. There's a lot going on in like everything I do, <laughs> which is kind of like uh, reminiscent of like kind of the inside of my brain, I think, because it's like there's a lot going on in there sometimes and it just comes out this way. But, um, Yes, yeah, so with these with a larger piece, um, and maybe because it is larger, it takes a little bit more commitment, right? Like you're gonna do this, you gotta do it. And I did do preliminary designs for both the previous installation that was similar to this and this installation. Um, but as you start to paint, then you change things, you know? And so I have a general idea of how that's gonna go and kind of how to space it out. Um, sometimes, you know, like you actually might mark out the drawings or whatever. When in these series of paintings, I haven't been doing that. I just kind of eye it and like kind of make it kind of look sort of what my original intention was. Gotcha. Um, but then some of the other pieces, like these smaller collage works, those really build from like 
the lowest level <laughs> up. Um, and those I didn't really map out. I mean, you know, a lot of times going into something, you might have like sort of a vision or an idea of what you want to create. Um, and those, those works kind of take a long time because of that. Um, that's kind of a luxury to give yourself as an artist sometimes just to like kind of like see how something just kind of happens. Um, but yeah, so I guess it would be a combination throughout my body of work. But yeah, when it's big like this, I usually have some idea going into it because you don't want to get like, you know, halfway through and like, oh, this isn't gonna fit. You know, right, exactly. <laughs> it's a lot more material. Sure. Um, so you have to you have to play it out a little bit more so you have enough paint, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or? I do. Yeah. Where'd you get those outstanding pants? Oh my gosh. Where did I get these? They're fantastic. Oh, I think, you know what? I got these, um, it's a website called Mod Cloth, which actually has really cool clothes. You should check it out. Mod Cloth? Mod Cloth, M-O-D. I don't know that they have men's fashions, but I think they have women's fashions, and they have a lot of really cool stuff. And some of it's kind of retro filling, you know, which vintage, is, which is kind vintage of yes. Yeah. And then Super some cute. of it is like not, but um, they have a lot of fun things you don't see everywhere there. So yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for the compliment on my pants. They're, they're comfortable, they're like pajama pants, even though they're a little shiny, so they look a little more fancy, but you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, well thank you so much for coming out. And thank you.